professional actors on the set. Except we're not acting, we're just being real. Professional, real people on the set. Here comes Danny. Here comes Danny. Danny! What's up, bud? What's up, brother? How are you, man? Good. How you been? What have you been up to? Not too much, man. What about you? A lot. This month has been busy. Uh, studying Spanish, uh, studying the piano. Uh, I just got back from Amsterdam for New Year's. That was a ton of fun. I just finished a new book. I just got a second patent, which is cool. Uh, I did air combat training, working out a whole bunch. Astronaut training. <laughs> so I've been kind of all over the place. It's been good. You? What have you been up to? I went to Applebee's. That's they're good. Good. I like Applebee's. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Think Bigger. My name's Jason Stum, your host here on the show that inspires you to think beyond today and tomorrow to help you achieve your biggest ambitions. And we got a great show lined up for you today. I'm gonna to be joined by Danny Dover. And if you don't know who Danny is, he has a really interesting story. He lives the Think Bigger mindset. And he's actually the perfect guest to have here uh, on our first real episode of Think Bigger. And back in 2010, Danny uh, created a life list of over 150 things he wanted to accomplish. Not before he died, no, before May 25th, 2017. And he's done all kinds of things. He's been to all seven continents, all 50 states, almost 100 different countries. He's a best-selling author. And what's amazing about this list he's created of, of the 150 things, he only has seven left to accomplish. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit. So let's uh, stop wasting time here. Let's bring Danny on the show and get right in to Think Bigger. Please. Danny, where you at? What's up? What up? Hey, buddy. Let's come on the show. Let's, Let's do, do stuff, man. Right. Come it's on. talk time. All right. It's talk time well, where we talk to Danny. I'm, I mean, I'm just going to walk over there. You can <laughs> sing dance I'll you sing want. and dance my way over. Yeah, I like it. I'll sing and dance my way over. I'll probably need a coffee. I'm a big... Danny Dover fan. Uh -oh. I don't know you very well, but I feel like I do. I think we're friends. Uh, yeah, I, th I would call us friends for I think sure. We move past acquaintance and we're into friends. We zone. are in the friend we're zone. We're in the friend zone. <laughs> we're in the friend zone. <laughs> but just so, I just thanks for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. I'm honored to have you because, uh, from from what I know and what I've seen, I, I think it's clear that you have a think bigger mindset, and I think what we're going to talk about will resonate with our viewers. So. But before we jump into that, I'm just curious when when you hear the words think bigger, what does that what does that mean to you? I think we should address this right off the bat. So generally, think bigger is just a meaningless platitude. Uh, it's something that you see on corporate business cards and corporate like motivational speakers. And I think the big challenge we have in this episode in the series at large <laughs> is that we need to inject some meaning back into think bigger. Because I think it's a really important concept. We just need to bring it back down to earth a little bit. We need to make it actionable and make it something that's really part of people's lives. Right, and that's really what the show is all about because, you know, I, I've said this before, is that anybody can say, hey, you want to succeed in life, kid? you got to think bigger. It's right. like, okay, great, think bigger. Right. Well, how do I do that or yeah. what does that mean? What does that mean? So the way I see it is that think bigger is only necessary because of the way that society is constructed right now. Things are very, very specialized. You come here and you work on strategy all day, every day. That's what you focus on and that's what you're very good at. And you go home and you'll get things that uh, you just don't have to think about, like uh, food, for example. You probably buy that at a grocery store. You get it from the like fast food or whatever you know, may you do. But you don't think about where the food came from. You don't have to think about the sourcing, about the farmers, about the animals, that kind of thing. It's all another specialist, somebody else who focuses on that stuff. The problem with this, though, is that by spending all this time in your career and all these things uh, focusing on your specialty, you couple your needs as a human being very closely to your job. So if you get fired, you no longer have the money to call the plumber or to get your food or to support your family. And this is a really big problem. This is a big, um, this is this is a big, I think, fear that lots of people deal with. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned this is a, something I kind of want to dive into a little bit because I think it's a recurring theme. I think all of us deal with internal struggle, and our external world is looking good. So it was like, do I have a good career? Check. Mm -hmm. Do uh, is my family healthy? Check. Do am I able to you know get by on my own means? Check. And so you look around and you compare yourself to what you see, and you're like, well, I should we should be doing great, but inside, things don't feel right. I think we all yeah. struggle with that. Yeah. So uh, I was very overweight. I was just at the beginning in 2010 dealing with depression. I call depression the smart person's disease. This is this makes me feel better about it. <laughs> it was something that was um, was I was really struggling with. I started talking to people, and this was this took place over a long time. I started taking, talking to people uh, over conversations over coffee, actually, so just like this, about hey, what are the things that are making are ha making you happy in your life? 
And that was important to me. And from that, I realized that it, it wasn't things that people were buying necessarily. Uh, it wasn't um, even things that people were reading or thoughts people were having. It was experiences. And I realized pretty quickly, you know, those are things that I can manifest in my life if I'm able to put the effort into it. I mean, if I'm able to not just think bigger, but act bigger. So from the conversations I had with lots of these people, uh, I made a list, but 150 items, right? Uh, and I got started on that. And I decided, you know what? Too rarely in our, in our time do we have somebody who will make a purpose for their life, just choose something. It's usually like you just follow the normal path of what's gonna happen. But I was like, no, I wanna have a purpose that I've chosen. I wanna make that the reason I wake up every morning. And it took me a really, really long time. Uh, and I started, I didn't have a lot of resources and it wasn't like I had this idea, I started working on this list and all of a sudden I was happy. Totally did not work like that. It took years of navigation, a lot of mistakes, a ton of like just total screw ups, things I should have been smarter than. Uh, but eventually I got to a, an area where this became my lifestyle, where I work on these life list items uh, every single week. Yeah, I think that lots of people deal with these kind of mm -hmm. things. Uh, I found a solution for me. I'm certainly not a medical professional and I can't give any advice on sure. what others should do. but but this is the path that worked for me to get out. So just to, for clarification here, maybe I should ask you this first. It's the difference between a life list and a bucket list. Good question. So a bucket list has an emphasis on death because you're trying to finish the bucket list before you die. And for many reasons, that's very difficult, um, mostly because you don't know when that's gonna happen. And secondly, because as you get older, you tend to have more responsibilities, makes it harder to do things that would be on a list, right? Mm -hmm. A life list is similar in that it's a, it's a group of goals that you wanna accomplish. Uh, but you give yourself a deadline that is in the foreseeable future. So I think mine was five or six years ahead of when I created it. Okay, well, that, which is which is so cool. And I just need to ask you because I'm sure people are going, okay, you got a you got a life list of things you're working on. I mean, do you have a, a career at the same time, a job? <laughs> I um, do because it turns out you have to pay for this stuff somehow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've very purposefully built a small company uh, and diversified my income. So I don't have one main source of money anyway. And I did this on purpose because I don't want to be tightly coupled to any, anything. So if I screw up and if I take risks and it doesn't work out, I'll be okay. So I make money in about five different ways. Uh, they're all online. So there's consulting I do uh, here at launch, which I love. Uh, it's mostly training and analytics strategy. Uh, I do YouTube videos. So there's a lot of uh, advertisement done with that, a lot of sponsorships that go with that. Uh, I have some affiliate work. Um, and then just kind of other random things that I make money doing. So, so you have multiple streams of, uh, what they would call that the smart passive income model, right? Where you have different versions yeah, of, although, of money coming in. Although, right, so there's this Except idea of smart, pop, there's this idea of like passive income, and right. I think that's just total bull. I mean, uh, we're, we both work really hard. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's some, while some of it may happen in the background, it's, it took me years to be able to get sure. to that point first. Which is the secret to yeah. smart passive income, by the way, you have to work really hard. Yeah, the four-hour work week is like maybe at the end you might achieve that, but you probably worked so hard before that that you just get bored. So, so you're I mean, not married. I'm not married now. You don't um, don't have kids. I don't have kids. I don't have pets. Right. Uh, I don't have a mortgage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're unencumbered. So and that's you know it's interesting. That's why I enjoy what you do because. I'm, I'm, I live a little bit vicariously through you. I'm like, oh man, if I could only be Danny, but then I go, well, see, married, got two toddlers, got one on the way, got a puppy, yeah. got things to take care of, and it's like, how, you know, I, I can't do that, so it's like, yeah. you know, well, what's, what's the point? I hear you. I mean, I think that I've made some choices in my life based off my priorities, but I certainly don't think that they're the right priorities for everybody. Uh, the things that I find fulfillment in, um, are not necessarily what are right for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that while, and this goes for anybody, because this is, we're now talking about real life here, there's things in your life that I will probably never get to experience, and there's also things in my life that you may never get to experience right. as well. And it's always just a trade off. Yeah. So mine might look luxurious and cool or, or whatever, um, but there's also things that you're doing in your life that I'm very envious of. And right, and you might, you know, say, oh man, I wish I could go to Applebee's with Jason on. Friday night and have mozzarella sticks. <laughs> I like mozzarella sticks. <laughs> I really yeah. like mozzarella sticks. I'm yeah. fascinated by them. So let's think about a guy like me who has a family. Can we take these same kind of lessons and make a life list for our family? I think so. You know, I mean, if you look back on some of your favorite memories with your family, those are things that could be related to bucket list items or mm -hmm. life list items in this case. So it doesn't have to be formal like mine. I just knew I was going to procrastinate on this unless I did that. Right. But what's nice about this is it gives you the excuse to get out and do these things that are inconvenient, to spend like a little bit more money than you might otherwise because you want to go out to like a park with your family or you might want to go out like a little bit of a road trip. Whereas normally it's just like that's too hard because there's all these problems with diapers and all these kind of things. If you have a list and you have a reason, you've all agreed with it, agreed on it as a family, it gives you that little push that I think is really useful. Right. And that's, you know, that's why I'm coming to. So here's a great example out of my own life. So 
it's again two kids, one on the way, um, and talk about going, taking a trip to Disney World, right? Right now, really good one. with everything that's going on and knowing how expensive it is yeah. to take three yeah. kids. Taking action on that is difficult. Yeah. So how do you go about taking, using that as an example, how do we go about taking action on that and go, taking it from our head and getting it out and on the path towards well, reality? So I think all hard problems at their root is really just a prioritization issue. What I've started to learn slowly is that excuses are genuine and there's two kinds. There's the self-imposed ones, which I think make up 90%. There's uh, excuses that are imposed by the world around you. So many of the self-imposed ones are not are not real in the sense that they can be overcome. But it's like the purpose of a hurdle or the existence of a hurdle is because something is difficult. Uh, meaning it is very difficult logistically to get you and your family to Disneyland. But if that was the sole purpose of your life, it was the only thing you cared about, it could be done. So what this does is it helps you find a happy medium in the middle. It also doesn't make sense to quit your job and move to, to Disney World, but it does help. You start if you working at Disney World well, to get I the employee work. discount. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Way cheaper if you're already there, right? So it's about it's about making these things that are not prioritized as it is, mm -hmm. moving them closer to prioritization. Okay. And just like with anyone, I think the idea is to start with things that are achievable and then build up momentum. Right. So for a big idea like that, tell me, does this make sense to you? Would to I've done this before in little exercises. Take something big and actually work through it backwards. Yeah, yeah. So instead of to start from the beginning, take the family to Disney World. Oh, start. Okay, we're at Disney World. How did we get here? Mm -hmm. Well. We drove in a car. Okay, we drove in a car. Did we drive in our car or did we rent an RV? Disney World. It or? suddenly feels more achievable. Yeah. And I think the part that a lot of people mess up, and I've done this many, many times, is just the timeline. Like if you're trying to get to Disney World tomorrow, it's just not going to happen. If right. you're trying to get to Disney World this year, it might not happen either. But if you say over the next 10 years, I want to take me and my family to Disney World, that's an achievable goal. So, but just like what you're saying, doing that backwards and making it more realistic starts to break down these ideas where it's just impossible, it can't happen. Right. It starts to become more possible. So, Let's do this. Let's change it up. So we've been talking about you know some some of the cool things that you've done and whatnot. But I think when we start talking about thinking bigger and doing certain things, there's always the possibility that it's not going to turn out the way we envision. Some yeah. people might deem that a failure. If you have that word in your vocabulary, a lot of people say hey, failure is not an option. Right. I, hey, to me, failure makes you stronger. If you fail at something, you take what you learn. I mean, do you have any experience that sticks out to you where you set out to accomplish something on, on your list and it just was a, a mess, it didn't work out? A absolutely, and this is a theme throughout my whole list um, that dealing with my body. So right now I'm working on trying to get six pack abs, which is yeah, kind me of too, a, brother. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm sucking at it. It's really, really hard. Uh, the problem with diet, at least in diet and exercise in my mind, is that there's a million small decisions. So this is something I've been working on for a year and a half now. I've failed basically the entire point. But like to take this to the extreme, I moved for a while to Germany for three months. All I did there, I don't speak German, all I did there was work out and eat well. I was, I was lucky enough to be uh, invited by a couple there that owns a CrossFit gym, Anna Paul. Uh, and all I did for three months was work out and eat well. And I got really, really close, but then I came back home because my visa expired, and I came into the holidays, and I just ate all of that potential away. <laughs> so Carbo City, and it was, it felt great, but it was me failing yet again on this, on this Well, island. but this is, and this is where you moved to Germany for three months, right? Yeah. If I want six pack abs, sorry, honey, I'm gonna try. I'll try. So this Move is to an Germany idea. for three months. So who, are, who do you think you are? Yeah. Who can do that, right? So this is an idea I call outlier status uh, because certain events will happen. Like for me, it's a runner. So I'll talk to someone who just ran an ultra marathon, right? And what happens is I view that person and I immediately just say, like, you're, you're a crazy outlier. Uh, and then you just completely write it off. And that happens uh, for me, it's runners. For uh, other people, maybe like people who live crazy lifestyles. And I think that that's actually the goal, is outlier status. For me, uh, freedom is a very like, core part of my life. It's something that indirectly affects me in every way. Uh, and so achieving outlier status so that I can do these things is something I, pr I prioritize so that when I have a challenge like this, I can pull out these tools that no one else has access to. Yeah, and, and once again, you actually kind of bring up in that whole thing a, a good point, obviously. So somebody reached out to you from Germany and said, hey, we've got this CrossFit place, we're trainers, come on over. That doesn't happen if you're not being public about sharing your right. ambitions and your goals, right? right? You know, how is important is that for you to, to let pe just tell people what you're trying to accomplish? Uh, well, I started out doing it just because I wanted to be accountable. Mm -hmm. And then I started realizing that there's a lot of like-minded people and there's a lot of interesting people who can teach me a lot. And so by sharing my story in these ways, I do it through a blog and through videos, that it's actually been a really, really nice um, like bonding and, and 
connection and uh, community and start to develop from it. All right, so you have a whole community there on lifelisted.com. People come to your website and they share ideas and you know help each other out yeah. and provide motivation for each other. That's really cool. It turns out that a lot of people are dealing with exactly the same issues um, and they're just trying to figure out, okay, how do you get to this outlier status? How do you get to a point, like structure your life so that you can move to Germany for three years because it's just such a crazy idea, but people are able to do it. So it's about building that bridge to get from point A to point crazy right. a little bit farther down the road. Right. So. And I'm going to ask you a hard question. So when we're talking about a life list, when we're talking about putting these things together, this is something that's very personal, right? Can you use those same kind of tenants to achieve something professionally within your company um, uh, or in an entrepreneurial way? So this is where I disagree with a lot of people. So the way I view it is that my profession and my career exists only to fuel everything else. So I want to enjoy the work that I'm doing, but it, rather than it being the core part and the most important thing in my life, it just is one of many. So in the same way I've diversified my income, I diversify my time, whereas my professional life is only one of five or six things. So for me, the necessity of thinking bigger is figuring out, okay, how can I reconstruct this? How can I decouple uh, these needs in my life from the work that I'm doing so that I have the opportunity, the luxury, to think about other things, to think bigger? But there's people out there, I think you have to agree, there's people out there who, who, who their lives and their work are intertwined. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Yeah. And you know, for the company they work for, or if they own their own business, they're, they're invariably connected. And really, I think there's people tuning in the show right now who want to have these ideas in their head, and they want to get them out, not for any kind of you know, personal thing, but to build their business or to do something for their company. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we take these lessons and actually you know, encourage people to use them to develop that product for their car dealership mm -hmm. that they know is going to make a huge difference for their company? Mm -hmm. So for me, the big tactical tool has been using smart goals. So breaking down big problems. Uh, you can't, I don't think you just start out thinking bigger. I think that you have to start thinking smaller in many ways and then you're like, hey, those all, all those ideas connect. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting. So taking that there. So what I do and I think what's made the biggest difference in my life is reading a book called Getting Things Done by David Allen. And he has a system for getting things done. And what he does is he takes all of your big projects, these things that are overwhelming, and breaks them into small sizes and he creates a system so you can handle these, these things that are coming through. Okay. All these are crazy requests. So by doing that, and it's the same idea as, as smart goals, uh, then I think that professional life becomes more manageable because you can start prioritizing things, which again, from my worldview, prioritization is the root of all problems that people are running into. So if you know where you're trying to go, then it makes it much easier to prioritize. This system that he's developed has been really useful for me for trying to figure out, okay, how do I logistically take the priorities I have, apply them to the situation that's around me for making money, for spending time with friends, for whatnot, uh, so that I can then make this realistic and useful. Bam. I like that. Good stuff. I like that. You're doing good, bro. You too. Do a little. Well, you're doing all the talking. Yes. So now, how good are you at ping pong? Oh, I'm terrible. All right, let's go. All right. This, when the, you serve, it has to bounce off your side. And over. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Only when he's, yeah. So, but it's got to hit my side, but then does it have to hit that side? No, it no, it's not down? like tennis where it's, or maybe it is. I, I, like I said, know. I haven't played in 20 years. So what's next on the uh, life list? What do you got left? So right now, I'm focusing on Spanish. Uh, the next big move that I have is to Colombia. Uh, so I'll be living in Medellin in the next three months or so. Oh, wow. What's your name in Spanish? Danny. Dan <laughs> Danny Toe? I thought, I thought there was a Spanish equivalent for everyone's American name. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. How do you do that? Uh, having you to be the first guest on the show to really help lay the foundation for us as we take our journey into thinking bigger. You couldn't have been a better person. Thanks for coming out from Seattle over here to Chicago. Mm -hmm. To be on the show it means the world to me, man. I really appreciate it. Totally wrong. Right. Yeah. right on, brother. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> Stop cheersing. Stop. <laughs> you did that already, right. sir. <laughs> and that's oh, it, guys. Dude. This episode of Think Bigger, we're going to wrap it up. Really, <laughs> really appreciate you tuning it in. Here's a little cheers to you watching at home, too. Hold up your hold up your coffee mug, your inappropriate coffee mug. Give it a little drink of coffee, whatever's left. And we'll see you next yeah. Tuesday, 3.30 p.m. on the Autotainment Network. Join us as we continue to think bigger. <laughs>